but it seems that the veteran anti-Islam politician Gert Wilders has led his PVV party to the largest share of the vote. PVV, which translates into English as freedom, is said to take around 35 of the 150 seats. Denise Marlowe, you are now listening to the Drunken Monks Podcast. Let's make it clap. This is not a happy moment for you. Guys, it's happy. It's Christmas. Okay, first and foremost, season greetings to you all. Season's greetings to my lovely partner, Denise. Season's greetings. Hey guys. World peace. Uh, we weren't supposed to do one because we're we're on break. But did we say that we were on break? Yes, did we? we did. Uh, okay. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. All right, we are on break. We don't know t until when, but we are yeah, on break. We are on break, and what we usually do between the seasons, but something of. <laughs> Import happened this week, um, import to our whole thing, because we're part of the Dutch, we're part of the Dutch kingdom, and they had their uh, elections for the Tweede Kamer for this for second chamber this week gone, and uh, we'd like to talk about that. Just... But before we start talking to that, who are we? I'm Olive Brown. Denise Faber, we are the Drunken Monks. Thank you. All right, what are we I'm drinking? Off my game, guys. I'm off my game. I swear to God. Yeah, the news was so upsetting, I imagine. Not, not upsetting, disappointing, but we'll get there. We'll, we'll, you know, like, we will get there. What are we drinking? We are drinking. Drunk one. A, a, like, a, and a beer, rum, and coke. We're keeping it simple. Red and, red and black, red and white. See those readings. This is the, uh, these are the living room sessions. That's why yeah, we're yeah, very yeah. relaxed. We're, we're in the inner sanctum of the mosque. <laughs> yes. Salute to that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get uh, right to it. A quick recap as to what happened. Um, as you said, um, elections took place at uh, the Kamer, are arguably the most important national election of the country. It determines uh, the parliamentarians who get to take seats, and thusly it determines which coalition gets made, and, and thusly in turn it determines which uh, particular people get to become the ministers. So those are appointed and so forth and so forth. Um, long and short, uh, Geert Wilders and his PVV, the Partij van de Vrijheid, Party of Freedom, uh, they won handily in our particular system because it's not that you get, okay, you know, this one got 30, that one got 20, but the mere fact that his is the biggest block combined with the rise of what has happened because the last election he had 17 seats if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Right? And um, going from 17 seats which was no slouch but uh, it was, 17 yeah. to 37 now? Yeah. 20 seat increase that's noteworthy. It's noteworthy <laughs> because that does not happen with niche voting blocks or whatnot. No. That is everybody in Nederland has an uncle that voted for him has an aunt that voted for him, has a son, daughter, everybody has somebody that voted for him. 2.3 million people voted for Gert Wilders, or the PVV, yeah. which is 25% uh, of the people that voted. Yes, so one yes. in four voters, I heard one in four Dutch people, but that's not true, one in four voters yeah. um, voted on uh, PVV, right. which is, is alarming, to say the least. And then the second runner up with 25, I'm looking at my screen yeah. for a minute, at tw with 25 um, seats is the coalition, the, the Samenvoeging of GroenLinks PVDA, right. which is a, a increase of eight seats, but it's now combining two parties. The one which is also alarming, but we'll get and then the third party, the th in in terms of votes, is VVD, <coughs> twenty four seats, and VVD was the last ruling party with right. the, 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 that had the prime minister. Um, for them, they dropped ten seats, which is also shocking for them. And then um, the fourth biggest party is a new party, a new social contract with uh, Omzig, and he came from uh, out of nothing. With uh, 20 seats. No, no, no. Yeah, 20 yeah, seats. Like from days as a But his claim to fame was being able to ring the bell for the two slaps. Uh, Affair. Which, to be fair, I'm happy that he did it. Yeah. Like him and whoever that was involved. So, yeah. So we'll leave that one alone. But 
what does all these numbers and what does all this mean? Um, that's what we're here to discuss here this evening. Uh, okay, first and foremost, we'll come out the gate. I, for one, am not gloom and doom. I don't think it to be gloom and doom. I don't think that's a bad thing. The reason why I mentioned gloom and doom, just to give a little bit of background, PVV, just think of them as our Trump. That's it. Yes. That's as best as it. But how is that not doom and gloom? That's not doom and gloom because America so far has been surviving one term of Trump and all his business. We'll see what happens on the next one. But uh -huh. that'll come to my... Again, I got points. <laughs> okay, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm right, but what it is is that... Um, I'm, like, I'm not doom and gloom, even though the pay, pay, pay got this much, because he's... Pay, pair builders and pay, pay, pay cannot govern by themselves. That is the first thing. That is one of the first... One of the good things of the political system, infrastructure that we got in place... You gotta compromise someplace, right? Okay, mm. you wanna say something? Yeah, I know it's true. Herd builders cannot um, um, govern by itself. Like, just for context, um, the Dutch Parliament, Tweede Kamer, has 150 seats. So, to be able to form a co coalition, you need uh, 76. Um, seats. He has 37, so you're you're missing 40, yeah. basically. 39, actually. Right. So you need more parties, because there's not another party that has um, the same amount, so you're going to need, like, two or three or four parties to support you. Right. you so, yes, yeah, so that's what you say. Well, you need to make a compromise, but to me, it's alarming that there, at this moment, there are a lot of parties, right-leaning parties, mm -hmm. and not per se center right but right far. fringes yeah, far. so then even though you have to compromise like how far do you really have to compromise no but okay um we're not gonna pontificate on all the various combinations um you and i tend to read a lot my columns this type of thing right now um the the idea is with the formatter or the leading idea one of the leading ideas is that it's going to be uh, pay, 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 and pay, pay, pay. And that's a lot of random, I'm sorry, but don't, that's how And I'm is. thinking also, yeah. um, uh, NSC, New right. Social Contract. But, but it would slide. I, everything would be right leaning at the very least. But with pay, 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 and um, uh, new, social, new Social Contract being more center right, uh, <coughs> pay, 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 they're untested. They only have Baby one. Is... Yeah, but they only have one. Um, one. They they were a one um, issue um, party. One issue party, right? And they they were the 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 birth child of the farmers being annoyed at all of the climate change kind of regulations that was basically killing their particular business. They would be <clears throat> libertarian would be the best word, and yeah, not boors as in oh they're dumb, but you know, more kind of like a conservative in that way and somewhere. Not that yeah. they are conservative. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Want things to stay the same and not be bothered with like anymore. That being said, um, the reason why I think a lot of people have been taken aback by this is because, and again, believe it or not, just like with Trump, I'm, I'm glad this happened because finally a truth has been spoken. Finally a, a truth that a lot of us who tend to be in Natal on, on the ground, just don't live in the wrong stuff or just don't move in the wrong stuff. Holland is not the wrong stuff. That was my post that I put mm. on Facebook. Holland is not the wrong stuff. A lot of the Norma and, like, uh, Norma and Vardic, like the values of the, of the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, all those wonderful hippie leftist pro progressive values truly proliferated within the wrong stuff. The rest of Holland still existed. The rest of, and, and like, not just like Grandstad Marchot, Steder, the Arnhems of the world, the Groningen's of the world, wherever there is a large population mm -hmm. of like students and student life. Yeah. But student and student life and Grandstad does not Holland make. There's a lot of land in between. There's a lot of people in between. And a lot of these people, I think that this was a backlash in like a bit towards all those leftist policies over time, and you saw what um, 
the worst excesses thereof was Tuslach affair, all the different scandals, <clears throat> um, the different uh, things with the culture where you have to be ultra progressive towards um, sex and and roles and, and immigration. Immigration that was a big one too, like as well. I think now people feel brave enough to say what they truly mean, and they feel like something's on the line. So they got behind him. He spoke to them. That combined with yeah, all the other parties were in disarray. Pavidiata was a monster in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s. They were they were the party to be. Look at where they are now. They have to hang on by a thread by combining forces with full links to find some kind of quorum where people could say, oh, this is leftist policy. You know what I mean? I truly think that it is representative of what Holland has been for a while of where Holland has been going for, like, a <clears throat> where it reaped the benefits of progressivism all those years, but they're done with it. They're but I wonder, because people are, th this is a point people are making, like, this is Holland, this is, now they're showing the true colors, this is not the other. But I wonder, because this is, okay, let's say, in ieder geval, PVV is one-fourth of the voters. Sure. Together, let us say all the right-leaning parties. Okay, they could have they could have ninety. Yeah, I'm seeing they could come up to ninety. But um, zetels, no, no, ninety um, um, say, um, seats. Right. Van 150, I don't know. Yeah, that is. Yeah, so that's two thirds. Two thirds. Right. It's just like would be um, 66 percent, ongeveer. Right. Um, of the voters lean right. But that still leave forty yeah. percent not right or not on the right, and not everybody voted. This, I know people are saying, yeah, now Holland is showing their true colors. Right. But is this not a very vocal minority showing their true colors? I would still back off of that statement for one simple reason. Um, we kind of have to like like we always use these terms. Progressive, left, right, center. Left. What is Holland's center? What truly is Holland's center? Because Holland's center is way left of America. Is way. But left. now it's becoming more right. Yeah, it's becoming more right. But still, the center does believe in certain things, right? That have been established and almost codified into DNA of Dutch type of culture. At the very least, freedom of speech. That like even here, here Wilders will protect. That for everybody. Not really. Now, freedom of speech, yes, but he is against freedom of religion, which right. to me is closely tied to freedom of speech. Okay, but we will get there. We will get there with our still as well. Because, I'd rather you know what the hell right now, because fuck it, we, we got a drink. Heert Wilders, the trainer that throws your know, sand in your eye, mm -hmm. the one that's outside throwing stones at a glass house, mm -hmm is not going to be the same shared wills that has a sick message. No, that's true. That's so true. That it, it is one thing to take the piss and to shout loudly and to garner attention and to try to scrape up and to build momentum and to do all that political shit. It's a whole other beast to govern. That's it true. It's a completely other fucking beast to govern. When Germany or France or whoever in the EU that has some leverage on Nadelum when it comes to certain things. And they decide, yo, you move Nadel, you gotta go along. To be along elsewise, these things are gonna get cut. When you have a country that also has to be run where everybody has to be paid, everybody has to be attended to, everybody, you have to adhere to the laws of the land because even if you wanna change a country, you still have to adhere to the laws of the land. It's gonna take you at least two years to come up with a policy paper. Let's not talk about being able to enact it. Let's not talk about... And that is saying if he has a good team. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That is saying that he has <laughs> ministers, advisors, his coalition partners. This man's been a one-man show, and as far as I can tell, for the last 30... No, not 30 years, but since the PVV existed, exactly. it is Geert show. Ex so no, I wanted... It was I per time back in the day first, though. So. No, Pimpertown was LPF. Oh, okay, sorry. So, um, 
I want, indeed, like you said, a team. I want to see who's behind. And he has a couple of people, but already the first couple of days after the election, I already saw that they were not allowed to talk. Like the other people on the list, yeah. they were not allowed to talk to the media. Yeah. Geert had to make the statement. Of course. So I'm like, okay, like what is... Like, who are these people and what can they do? Mm -hmm. It's a big Geert show. So I, it's true. And I, for a, a long time, I was thinking that Geert Wilders does not want to govern because it's way easier, like you say, to shout and kick from the sideline and to critique. Mm -hmm. The beste stuurlui staan aan wal. Now the stuurlui has to, the stuurman has to take the wheel. Right. And let's and that, see. And that for me, and that for me is where all this comes back down to. I would, I would wager. Without knowing, because I'll I'll be honest, unless it's national politics, I don't really pay attention to Dutch politics like I should. But I think that you're more paid mm. than than I am. But I could say this much: I'm willing to bet that Holland, for every sector, has a brain trust. Has you know, like your ten people that knows exactly what's going on in that thing. And these ten people have opinions. They have. They might not have, have voted for him. They might not agree with him or, or his party or whatever have you. These people are the people that you have to win over in every sector. So in education, in defense, in um, like infrastructure, in justice, no matter what, you have you need each and every one of these people to be able to run the place. If you don't win them over, you don't get the place running optimally and then it hurts your chances for re-election. Because say what you will about Dutch people, but they also are quick to critique should just one pin be out of place. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And that for me is it, it, it like it's not even scared but it's more like, oh, that's one of the checks and balances that might keep him, his ideas or wanna he has already signaled and the party has already signaled the PVV has already signaled a walking back, a willingness to walk back certain you know, rougher statements or rougher campaigns. Over your eigen schaduw heen stappen were literally the words he used. Right, you understand know what I mean? And so for me, that, that already telling me something. That, again, it's one thing to campaign, it's one thing to make promises, it's one thing to rabble rouse and all that. It is an absolute entirely different thing to govern. And I'm willing to bet that some of his, some of his or the pay very sharper edges are going to be filed on. And then, and this would be a moment in time too, as well, especially if Baby Bay gets a seat at the table, for them too to understand from the inside what others have been grappling with. Yeah. What has been going on and whatnot. Yeah, I think for them it's also going to be a rough ride. I don't think they know... Yeah, it's going to be like... Because here's the other part of the... Here's the other part of the nastiness, right? I think... Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that Rutte, by sheer force of will and personality, was keeping a lot of stuff together. He was the politician, not in front of the camera, but being on it, right? Possibly. That, that, that he, and I think that a lot of connective tissue might have gone with him. And I think that now you have like vacuums that have occurred. Yeah. Where, example, with the same lifestyle of the day, the day uh, forget her. Dylan Giz. I don't even right. dare to say her last name. Right. No, but the honorableness of will only say yes. like that. But it was proven that, yeah, that she was not up to the task to be able to bring Vivian back into the fold. Yeah, but that, I don't know. Yeah. If I don't know what was happening behind the scenes. I don't know in how far she had control. And to, to talk about the VVD even just, um, I was reading in Dutch media and listening in Dutch media. They said that um, the the current party leader, Ms. Dillon, you, you no, I don't know, Ms. Dillon, let me just uh, stay there. You don't want to mess up your name, Sarah. We're trying to give you like some... That's kind of um, open the door for PVV because um, they let, of not, not Ms. Dillon, like PVD, pardon. They let uh, um, the party fall in the summer over migration. There was an issue with migration and, uh, and the family reunification and whatever. 
and uh, the government couldn't reach an agreement, so government fell. And people are saying this is what actually drove voters from VVD to PVV, because VVD made, um, VVD made the campaign about migration, and now if we have to talk about migration and we are, we are against migration, then you go to the party that everybody knows that is against migration. Like VVD is a major moeilijk. So okay, we now said it's okay to be against migration or certain migrants to, to put it a little bit more specific. And then people went to PVV. That's what people are saying. That's what the that's, general that's feeling what in Holland is. But I was wondering, is that, that, that does play a factor, but I'm also wondering, um, in hoeverre does it play a factor that, one, she is a woman, two, she is from Turkish descent. I can see, I can see VVDers not really digging that. You cannot say that out loud. You can, that, that is not chic, that is not cool. But now that you have uh, PVV as a viable alternative, I wonder how many of these people were actually, not per se migration, but more like a Turkish woman leading the party. Right. No, I don't, well, okay, look, I've, it's what, been, Ooh, 2009, we're in 2023, it's been 12 years since I've been in Holland, so I will have to kind of let that one be in pass, but um, I will say this much. Um, to come back to the thing about Groen Lakes and Faith Bidea. Uh, a friend of mine, um, love him to death, but I don't always agree with him on the politics of things. But he made a statement that he said that this was also like a backlash for "Quote unquote woke leftist politics." That, Why? That, that, but but for me, then this isn't a backlash. It's been a movement away from that for a while. Even and it's, globally, it's not yeah, Dutch. It's right. globally. But that did put me to think about the shortcomings of, in particular, PVDA, because from links in the beginning, and especially um, like SP as well, like what about yeah. there. Their uh, full title is, but SP, the tomato <laughs> links, were a reaction to the centrification of PVDA like after a while. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's where the PVDA used to be the vortrekker of everything that was good and left. Mm -hmm. um, and slowly but surely, this, the size of the party and the way of doing things and seeking re-election and becoming softer with certain things, it gave air to other more left of parties as well, just like anything else. I think, I think, I think that in our lifetime, um, left politics, progressive politics, lost the plot across the globe. Can we put a pin in that, go for a break, and you're gonna <laughs> explain why leftist <laughs> politics we, this was supposed to be a quick one, but all right, cool. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a break, guys. We're going to be right back. And yeah. we are back. We are back. Okay, let's jump right into it. Before the break, Marlo, you were saying that backlash, um, it's progressive. Not, it's not. It's not a backlash. It is. It is the left across the globe through globalism. If you want to ask, like, if you want to get high minded, I think has lost the plot when it came to the people that they represent and it's 
mandate mission. Uh, an example of that is in the States. Tell me. Um, for a lot of years, until the 90s, yeah. um, you could have depended on unions to vote with the Democrats, which are the left in the States, right? Unionization, socialization of things, making sure that you got our collective block. These are all core left tenets. These are these are this is written in the book or whatever book that you read. Um, then came Bill Clinton. Then came NAFTA and trade agreements and globalization, like a little bit, which kind of kick started there. And what you have then is that you saw the Democrats protect unions less and allowed union busting more. And unions saw workers' rights, saw that, and slowly start to pull away from the Democratic Party as well. To where you fast forward to now, 2023, 2024, going into this next election, like in the States, it's a toss up as to who is going to woo that block of voters. Because right now, populist Trump, say whatever you want about him, but he has populism as his brand, mm -hmm. and the party goes with him. So the party is trying to make hay of, hey, we're the people of the, we're the party of the people now. You should come with us. We think about workers' rights and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. This never would have happened if the left would have stayed on their game, if the left would have stayed on their ball, if the Democrats would have stayed on their ball. I, I too feel that when it came to a lot of things in Nederland, you had leftist ideals. Like you said, it is chic to say, oh, I'm a feminist. Oh, I've been that, I've been that, and say it in the wrong start, man. Intelligence, you know, so it's chic to say that, but the doors name man or frau, they can't eat ideals. They cannot eat this or that. Now, luckily, Holland is very, 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 um, not poor. Jeez, what <laughs> um, affluent, rich, affluent, rich, right. loaded. No, I wouldn't say loaded, but but they the doors they need under doesn't have a bad. Right? Nope. Social vang net and everything else. You're not starving and ate a lot of less like you really want, right? But at the same time, has has there been a forwarding between the 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 economic crisis in 2008, when when the housing crisis came and nearly blew up the whole damn world, mm -hmm. between the Corona, between everything else that hit people in the pocket, and it's constantly you're hearing that Wardenham stays dirtier. Home in Natal and Tavona, between having, <coughs> or, and I am for it, but between having a lot of your identity and your traditions being told, you're the bad guy. For Zwarte Pete, for example, for me, you know, hey, if you're keeping up Zwarte Pete, you're the bad guy. Whereas you, as I can at least empathize with the one protecting Zwarte Pete from, oh, that's my culture, that's my thing. We're not trying to get into that debate, but I'm just saying mm. that. I can see that from all sides, the door snake made longer, feeling like whatever that was a boom period in the 80s and 90s, slowly being chipped away for whatever reason, right? And I could feel like the centralization of a PVDA, of making compromises, of going more to the right to, to, to appease and to get votes and to be reelected, that a lot of ideals were not made flesh anymore. They were not made into hardcore things. They were given lip service just to be able to say that i'm on that bus not really putting in the work putting up your sleeves risking not being elected again putting in policy to make sure that things are done in a particular way right now even though you have immigration as a problem or whatnot and so there are a lot of natal unders that one in four thing also means that alatona first generation second generation also voted for of course of you know course saying? of course so if they who were maligned and who historically have voted leftist policies to protect their own interests if some of them could see the fact that hey we don't want those other alohtona or we don't want this to happen or one of them that means to say that the left has dropped the ball because you had these people it is the equivalent of me and you being married I neglect you, you go outside and you haunt me. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. You were home. I could have took I could have taken care of you. I could have wooed you and stayed in love with you and made you fall in love back in love with me and all that shit. I could have done that. 
But instead, no, I'm out with the boys, and I'm saying about how good a marriage that I have at home. No, yeah, I, so, I, I feel you, but I, I look at it a little different. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, indeed, like, across the world, we see this populist, right-leaning movement, and I think, indeed, it's, I don't know if, it's, if we should say it's backlash mm -hmm. from, yeah, wokeism, I don't like the word, but from progressive... My oh, like, so until as well, just a, yeah, yeah. a small like, tangent. Woke is a hip hop term, y'all. Woke is a hip hop term that you fuckers took and you just bleached it to all death. And I'm hey, I'm tired of you motherfuckers. That's Straight for up. another episode. Yeah, on, go ahead, go ahead. Um, but I think the problem, and I think why you have the Trump and you have the Bolsonaro. Okay, Bolsonaro gone, but you have all these no. Trump-like puppets all across the world. And Gerd, Gerd Wilders is just indeed, like you said, the Dutch Trump. And why it works, because they're, they're all talking about times gone by. Huh? In the past, it used to be so good. Yeah. And we need to go back to that time, that time before we had the tsunami of, of, of um, buitenlanders, that time before climate change was an issue, yeah. that time before um, the woke agenda was there, that time before queerness, before black people, before whatever, whatever. And, 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 and an imagined time that was never there. Um, but I think the problem is that the, I don't know if we're going to left, progressive, or maybe more realist parties have been signaling for the last I don't know how long that there are problems. Danger, danger, climate change. We need to act now. We need to, um, you know, take measures. They're, they're warning against, OK, danger, danger for Harding from the Maatschappij. Danger, um, all kind of things are going wrong. So they're signaling, amen, so we need to change, we need to do something. But they're not coming up with a solution. They're not, so they're only saying, oh my god, doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. But we're not, they're not um, coming up with a bright future. You need doom and gloom. Doom and gloom is fine to um, acknowledge and to to signal, but you need to post, even if it's a distant future, that is bright in front of you. And they can do that. All these populists are talking about a bright past. They, they, they also don't offer you a future. It's a goal but they, at the very least. See, like so they make you feel good. Actually, they make yeah. you feel good. We want to be, we want to to be, to feel good. And I think in Netherlands, in the Netherlands, as we said, it's an affluent country. People, people, a lot of people. That was the word it was oh about. yes, a lot of there people have it well. You do not, and you're you're living comfortably, even though everybody is uh, is complaining and all kind of thing. Everything is getting more expensive. You're living well. Everybody can afford to go to Curacao, spend I don't know how many days in an all inclusive, uh, go back. And maar the doom and gloom is. Hey, you moet geen verder reizen meer maken. Climate change is bad. You should not contribute. Hey, um, stop eating meat. Hey, um, all these farmers with their with their either meat or uh, whatever. It's it's all bad. And you don't want to make you want you don't want to make to feel bad. Do you know something that that struck me when I was living there? No. So. Uh, even with the with the very little rack flock that I've had with Holland in my youth, yeah, it like I was always told that Holland was kind of like was kind of like egalitarian. You know what I mean? Like like, like that, that is was the like, fiction of Holland. That yes, was, that was my idea, like in my head, right? That yes. that it was kind of egalitarian. The prime minister rides a bike. That that's as best as you can explain. Yeah, you know what I mean, there's there's no there's little to no like cup solars. Yeah, somewhere between the nineties and when I got up there. Affluence, like, like, there's a difference between pro, pros, prosperity Parity. and affluence, huh? Yeah. A affluence is extra. Is like, is more than is. Okay. Prosperous means that yo, I ain't gotta worry about food. I ain't gotta worry about on the dock. I ain't gotta worry about this or that. Affluence means, and I got a beamer in the, like, in the garage, right? Yeah. Something happened. Something happened, and y'all, y'all help me out if you know what I'm talking about. But something happened between like late '90s and like my time up until 2009, where affluence became the style. Where okay. like, you know, like the like the restaurants in Amsterdam became fancier. 
the the like for me club life because I was a DJ. So yeah. like club life became more extravagant and more, you know, of a separation between VIP and the regular folk. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot more like, oh, you ain't up on this. There was a lot more flexing. Even at Dorsey Natal under, it was a little bit more of an, oh, I'm driving this, you're not. I'm doing this, you're not. I'm like I'm having these experiences. Oh, I've oh I've been to Monaco and to Morocco and to South Korea and this and that. So, so mm. like like your passport became a flex to like as well. Mm. And for me, it was like it was kind of like a weird thing for me. It was like wait, but I but this is not the idea of Holland that I've had in my head. Like like this is not this is not the cheese sandwich eaten with one slice of bread type of brother. You know. What I mean? Yeah yeah yeah. You have the nuchter ones still. You have the ones that are still you know down to earth or whatever. But I think that that affluence too became a sticking point for the Dorstein any longer. Mm. I I I was lucky enough that I was able to spend time with you know like those boys down in Murray. Yeah. You know, like, ach, yo, the hubber, straight Jeff, on, yeah. on. the boys done with a shaved head and the Dutch ain't too perfect and they drink, like, you know, like 50 cent cans of beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you hang with them. And they're not the ones, you know, like, they ask me a million questions because they don't know about Stasia, Samaritan, and where I'm from, and this and that. And they're willing to work with you, but they don't know. And so the, so the bad jokes come and the own vacant head comes and vacant fail. But, Again, to me, those are the people that vote that vote for him as well. Not to say that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that I think that affluent people in Holland became too comfortable with the status quo, thinking that the status quo was always going to stay, which comes back down to my same thing that I said just a minute. No, but you are thinking affluent people in Holland being comfortable with the status quo. You're thinking left-leaning people. <gasps> A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. The majority, I would say, of the affluent people in the Netherlands are right-leaning. The affluent, the affluent people were historically VVD. VVD was right-leaning, was center. It became more to the center. Now it's going back to the fringes because it saw that there is. They thought they could snoop. People from Gerard Wilders and Baby Bay and Forum for Democracy and I don't know what. In, instead, all their people went to those parties. It, it, it happened the other way. But um, I think affluent people in the Netherlands historically are right, right, right leaning. Do There's, you think that Holland is a leftist country or a right type of country? Be honest. Like after this, like election, like, like is it? Like a progressive type of country, or do you think it is. It is. Prog uh, you, you. I think you can be progressive and right. We all. We always say it's left and progressive, and right and conservative. I don't think that is. I don't think that is, um, per se, nog the yeah, het geval. Exclusive. exclusive. Nee. I think um, people like money. They like not to pay a lot of taxes, but they also like the government to take care of them. You cannot have a government taking care of you if you're not paying taxes. Yeah. Like, somewhere has got to give. Yeah. And I think we're living in a time of schizophrenia, and waarschijnlijk we cannot say this because this is probably not politically correct, mm -hmm. but I think we're living in a time of, okay, like you like to say, cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. I think we are conflating things, and I think we are not realist about how to, like, your words again, how the sausage is made. Yeah. You say a lot of people, the people don't know, but I think, um, I'm not, not sure if it's, if you don't know or if you don't want to know. We're, we're, we're feigning or ignorance. We don't have time to know. Let's oh, that mag ook. So I... As, as informed as I try to be, I'm not informed because I don't have the time. Yeah. I don't have the time to go deep diving into every... Um, newspaper article, like every think piece, every you know um, debate or way to fail. I don't have the time, and that that to me is a part of the play too, like as well. And that to me is where I think that Herod Wilders won as well, because again, simple messaging. We immigration bad, come here, boom. But uh, yeah, this, just to come back to my point, that yeah. the left or progressive, or how you want to call it, yeah. have been saying danger, 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 guys. We need to. Um, minder, we need to be more um, um, sparsam, we need to watch how we, we spend our energy, we should stop buying clothes at Primark because of slavery of the... Weet je, danger, do that allemaal niet, maar not a solution. And uh, Geert Wilders, 
He is not per se giving a solution. He's giving a fake solution. The problem are foreigners. This, yeah. uh, this is a solution. Yeah. Like, I, I feel my situation is fucked up, but it's because of that of, one. Of, of that one. Yeah. While the left were saying, your situation is, a f is fucked up. Because of us. Well, it's fucked up. Yeah. And that and Nick. So I think, so when, when we, were, we are analyzing who voted for Wilders, how is it going, is Holland right, yes or no, I think, at I the look, the point of the matter is everybody voted for Wilders. Everybody. You cannot say it's the people from the province. You were making a point about the Randstad. No, people, no, in, no, no, intelligentsia, no. as you like to say, no. Randstad people, black people, Muslim people, I'm sure. No. Everybody. People that people would, and that was the shock. Yeah. That was the shock. People that... A lot of folks was not expecting black folk to work to vote for him. A lot of people were not expecting, like Alachtona, Intelligentsia, Ronsat folk, all that. They were not expecting none of these people to come forward for him, but they did. And, and that, yeah, that is that's the telling part. But the question is, are were they voting because they agree with the xenophobia or with whatever, well, whatever? One of his point of were they pissed? Yeah. So we we don't which, know. Which comes back to what I was saying. You can't go your wife at home, you're fucking pissed off, she gonna haunt you at some point. And maybe she don't like the dude that she's with, but she's just doing it to piss you off, and we'll see. But then, <sighs> okay, okay, last, I know it was supposed to be quick and dirty, yeah. but I think we're going for a break again. Like it and then, no, but then I want to hear your thoughts, like, what, why do we care about PPV? What does it mean for us? Okay, cool. Then, then we're gonna do one, um, yeah, we're gonna get, I definitely gonna get some more booze, because this shit is making me depressed. But, um, yeah, guys, uh, we are going to take a break, I guess. We'll be right back. We're back. We're back. I'm still very comfortable here in the <laughs> in the middle of the monastery. What are you in the in the back room? In the front room? In the I don't know. It's the season. It sounds like our sex day, by the way. In the back room. In the oh Lord. All over. Uh, look, dude. Um, speaking of your comfort, you might not be so comfortable. I'm still here, Bill. There's been a like. Okay. Okay. All right, all right, all right. No, no, no. Jokes aside, um, that was what this segment was gonna be. What, what's it all mean for us? Um, yeah. Do we need to be scared? Do we need to care? Um, I think in the short term, no, because uh, government bureauc bureaucracy within the style of government that we have is a lumbering beast mm -hmm. and inertia is a thing. So it's not like er like everything is gonna stop on a dime. Minnesota, but I do think that going down the line, Von Knuffler, her her position might be in danger, because she definitely has been one of the ones that has been, at least on paper, at least to the outside world, been trying to be an ally to us. Let's try to like build a bridge between uh, the Antilles, the former Antilles, and to Holland. And um, that definitely does not vibe with what PVV one wants to do. That definitely does not vibe with um, maybe on the cover what David A was like wants to do. All of the right leaning people at the very least wants to at least save money and cut spending. And if they feel that spending in any way, shape, or form towards the Antilles is extraneous or um, superfluous or rated fail, that was a big word, y'all. I'm sorry, it was just a waste of time. Sorry. But. Um, I think that that is going to become under re-examination at the very least. 
I think that um, not at the very least, the government got the fall. At the very least, Kurt Wilders and everybody got to get their bearings. Whoever's coming in there, because it's going to be a brand new crew. At the very least, they got to get the the, the situation under control. Let's call it a year, because even with the formateur, it does take a while, even under the best of circumstances. It does take a couple of months, if not a year as well. Mm. So that's one part, part of it. I think after that year, once everybody, once everybody, once everybody has gotten their bearings, there are other parts of the thing to like as well. So what if you have a coalition, you have to divvy up the pie. David A is going to do finance and justice, may, maybe, or whatever, because they have history with that, and those, and those are very tricky, very kind of touchy things. Um, Baby Bay would definitely more like agriculture by Vaudeville. Um, what would what would be left for for like Pay Bay? Would that be Kingdom Affairs? Would, would that be this or that? Or whatever, whatever, whatever. If Pay Bay gets Kingdom Affairs, which is us, then we got something to talk about, and then we got to look at the fact of what is going to happen under a Pay Bay appointed cabinet for Kingdom Affairs, and are they going to be more antagonistic? more willing to piss us off or piss, you know, like to cut us off or no matter what, then is when you're going to find, to me, your answers. But that timeline, to me, realistically speaking, is not for at least another year, if not two. Then, and, and that time, we got to get our ducks in a row. And that is assuming, this is the last caveat, that is assuming the rest of the world has not gone batshit crazy. Yeah. We got, we got, we got Trump. We got Trump. Maybe around the corner, we got Israel and Palestine. That's still something that's got to be dealt with right now, which is a hotbed. We got still. Venezuela and Guyana, Ooh. right around yeah. the corner. That's another one too. Like as well, we have Ukraine and Russia because that still has not been resolved, and we got a lot of things that are bubbling because China is looking kind of. Kind of itchy towards Taiwan a little bit, a little bit not, a little bit, a little bit not. Who knows? And I think so, India is just rubbing their hands to see where they can jump in any anywhere. This and MBS in, in Saudi Arabia uh, oh, yeah. has his finger on the scale when it comes to oil prices and everything else. So yeah, guys, we just gave you a whole fucking geo I thought geopolitical zip in like two fucking minutes. The season of doom was gloom was supposed to be finished. Yeah, we're starting another season of doom and gloom. Jesus Christ! But no, but that, but that, because because Holland, while not a small player, has to kind of go with the tides with like certain things where the world is concerned to like grow. Well, and if they're busy with that, they're not fucking with us. My that that think. that is going to be the question as well because Gert Wilders, even though it was campaign and even though he now has to um, look for a co coalition, he has said he wants a Nexit. Like you had a Brexit, yeah. they want a Nexit. So he, what do you see? What you see around the world is that a lot of countries are going to look internally. They're quitting looking around and cooperation with other countries. Right. Um, like, binnenlandse politiek wordt belangrijker. Yeah. And when you're busy with your internal affairs, everything else on the back burner. So I know that you say, yeah, he would have to follow suit and, you know, follow the world. But if you say, fuck the world, and I want to be, I want to be, you know, Nederland for the Nederlanders again, I don't know how that's going to play out. Look at at Brexit. Now they're crying. But you see, but this, but, but this is but this is my point. That that that's why I wanted to go jump in before like you gave like your whole thing. No bullshit, right? When Nexit was hot for him in his mouth, Brexit was right around the corner. It didn't happen yet. Yeah. All these things happen around the same time again. Trump got elected, everything happened around the same time. It was like an explosion of fucking stupidity, right? <laughs> and what happened? Brexit happened, and now, beyond a shadow of a fucking doubt, you know that the populace of Great Britain has buyer's remorse. You listen to the radio station. Again, I try to do that there to like as well. It's part of the reason why I'm not so in tune with Nayla, because I'm a little bit too all over the place. But England, Great Britain, motherfucker, they have a problem with that thing too. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think that... That Nederland, I, I don't think you could put that shit to like a referendum 
En de doorsen in Nederland zeggen, ja, hoe do- do- klopt met, met, met je EU en weet ik veel. Nah, because they've seen what happened across the pond. They've seen, they've seen Trump. Happened. And still we have a Wilders. No, but Trump and Wilders, look. There's a difference. There's a difference, I feel, between being horny and being in love. Right? Mm-hmm. Being horny is like you're attracted to this thing and it's a flash in the pan and it's here and whatever. So nobody wants to marry Heart Builders, not in the <laughs> actual sense. Nobody wants to marry Trump. Trump's own party doesn't want to marry him. Mm. They were horny and they got stuck in a thing and now they got to write it out. That to me is what's going on. Heart Builders to me represent Nigel Farage, another blonde headed bull. Oh, uh, yeah. To me, represents that whatever happened you were horny in that moment you made a mistake you had a one night stand but now you're pregnant mm-hmm. now you gotta hold a baby or now you gotta figure out to have an abortion or whatever in love when i'm in love i don't like every day i don't like every day you 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 cuss me for the toilet seat you don't take out the garbage but i do but when i don't you cuss me still you, you, you don't cook, but you want me to cook every fucking day, but then you're going to complain. You know, so it's not mm. really gonna like you. But mm. Jesus Christ, I'm going to cook for you. Jesus Christ, I'm going to take out the trash. Jesus Christ, I'm going to try my best to put on the thing. But I don't like it like every day. In Nederlanders, for whatever I think it is, I think that at the very least that they're in love with the idea of EU. I think that they're in love with the idea of they might not like it. They, they don't like it when Greece don't pay their bills. They don't yeah. like it when Italy don't pay their fucking bills. They don't like it when say, hey, little Pola here or something. Mm. Like, you, know, the, you know, they don't like that. But they like the prestige of it. They like to know that these things are going on. They also have longer memories than most when they remember why the EU happened in the first place. World War II and Germany and, yo, Klein and Nederland takes pro to Duitsland. The company, Miles Samus, and yo, he's my partner now. So mm. he kick up a shine that, yo, it's to outside, it's not to me. Mm. I think that the Dorsey Nederland kind of knows that. I think that they kind of understand that. If not, to deep in the ground, that they understand, like, at least the parts of it on A Leicester. Mm. I get I get my tomatoes from Spain. I get to go to Turkey uh, this and that. I you, think you're you, giving them too much credit. Really? I think you're giving them I, too I, much I, credit. I, I, honest to God, I don't think that Nexit is gonna happen. I don't think that that was just uh that was just another yeah yo look at me, you know, like that type of shit. Yeah, I don't think Nexit's gonna I, happen I either. It looks like it's gonna happen. And I do think our shit needs to be in order in the next two years. I do think that to whoever pop politician from here that is listening, please, Lord, and that's not just here, Samantha, Stacia, wherever, y'all get your ducks in a row because it's like, the listen, it's gonna be over soon. Listen, we've been trying to get our ducks in a row for the last 13 <laughs> years. <laughs> okay, that's so, gonna move both for you because you're about to get pissed. <laughs> no, but even just to come back to the whole Gerrit Wilders, does it have a meaning for us? I think yes. In ieder geval, kijk, in, in St. Martin, we don't know what's going to happen. Campaign season started. All Boy. the bullshit shenanigans, foolishness started. Boy. We're going to see what happened in there. No clue. Here in Curacao, we have another two years. If nothing crazy happens. Wait, two? Really? Yeah, the election was in 2021. <laughs> so... It's weird to me now, man. I keep thinking that it's right around the corner. Nope. Like, yo, next month we're going to start up. Oh, like, I always do like as well. Fuck. But, like, we have a, a, a government that's not really fans, fans of Holland. Oh, yeah. Um, we had Fefe Day, a government headed by Fefe Day for the last 500 years, now for the last, I think, um, 12 years or so. Mm-hmm. They were not fan, fans of, they are not fans of us. I don't think they're fans of the kingdom, including all the islands, the kingdom should just be the Netherlands, but they had some kind of decency. They had some kind of... Um, decency and an understanding of history. See. Si. An, an acknowledgement of history. So there was some kind of way. Now you're going to have, on this side of the ocean, people like who... You. Who, yeah, who, who... I like you either. Like, yeah. Exactly. It was a mother goyerei. Um, you say, yeah, we need to get our ducks in a row. I'm very um, pessimistic where that is concerned. No. Um, and 
you know, we're a very small player with, in the eyes at least of Holland, nothing to offer. In the eyes of PVV, absolutely nothing to offer. This, it's going to be a very I interesting... I that conversation. Well, yeah. In Seoul. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah, so we just have to sit and see. And I mean, it's, yeah, uh, th th there are going to be some interesting times, you know, coming up. No, but okay, but then... You and I like to tie things together. We like to make circles. Mm -hmm. I, I, this would be my end point. I started this thing by saying this, I don't feel doom and gloom, right? Mm -hmm. I am disappointed. I do feel caution. I do feel a lot of things. But now you go, woe is me, because for me, some evidence has presented itself. Right? Okay. Being? In the States. Trump got elected. Republicans got elected, bullshit shit. They're surviving that and even coming back stronger in certain ways. Unionization, right? I'm not talking about the government, I'm talking about the people. Mm. Right? Okay. Unionization has come back in a big, bad way. Codification, uh, like voting on securing abortion rights when people start to act a fool, holding. Trump to the fire when it comes to his indictments. I thought, let's start there. Um, the world has seen also other versions of like hiccups, if you mm -hmm. call it that, when it comes to elections and whatever, so on and so on. And nothing imploded, nothing went boom, boom, dead, right? Mm -hmm. the, and Holland is one of the most, say what you want about the place, but it's one of the most measured reasonable stable stable places in the world so for uh while for like it's not wacky it's not crazy it's not oh he, he's on the top of the like on top of country and he's pissing out no he's not doing that even in our like mad stuff on crazy it's not crazy mm. and even within that mm -hmm. it's crazy but it's not like we can't survive it, or it's not like we can't, it might be a wake-up call. I think that that would be the quicker truth of anything else. I think that this might be a moment of reckoning for at least for leftist politics. Le leftist, I'm not saying progressive, because, because mm -hmm. you're right, but it is a wake-up call for leftist politics, for centrist politics, for technocrats, for if you want to be a meritocracy, you got to figure out your shit right now too and learn how to hold a mic and talk to people and not just oh lord we're gonna die but give a solution yeah all that shit i think that this is a wake-up call for that i think this is also like a wake-up call for the regular grassroots kind of constituents because our friends at Bahrain, they ain't got a fucking seat like that too huh? mm -hmm. that is also a wake-up call yeah not have identity politics be your only stuff well, m maybe yes but my the word too many Crazy shit going in the background with but, toxicity, and I don't know what kind of. But that's kind of a point. But that, but that, but that's kind of a point. <laughs> that's kind of a point. Is like, Herod Wilders didn't take a day off. That's the one thing they, that you can give him and the party. Mm -hmm. they never took a day off. I remember when they had one. I, it's 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 been a twenty year journey. Them them fuckers had one seat at one point. I remember that shit. Mm. Clear as day. Built and built and built and built and never took a day off. Yeah. You can arguably say, Peter, they took a day off every now and again. You can arguably say, here, Bob took a day off like every now and again. Mm -hmm. You can say in St. Martin, you know, whoever they want to back or whatever, mm -hmm. but they but they took a day off. Except, except for Melissa. Except for Melissa. What's up, sweetheart? But she she's not in government, man. See. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. but no, but jokes is jokes. But I mean to say, I, I I can't tell you who said it, but I remember the maxim: even evil men flourish when good men do nothing. And I this is this is me, it. This is it. And that for me this is, is where the whole thing lies to. It's like, and it's not just leaders. Leaders got to step up too, but constituents got to step up. If you don't like what you saw. With the election, then you gotta put your fucking fucking hands into the dirt and start to work things out. So like as well, if you are in a fucking building with other neighbors and whatnot, and you refuse to talk to them, maybe now is the time to talk to them to find out what the hell is going on. 
to see where they voted, to see what they're doing, to see why maybe if they fear you, if you look like me or whatever the fuck, maybe it's a time to bake a cake and to try to make some friends. Maybe it's some time to look after like every, like everybody's kids and not just your own. And mm-hmm. As a neighbor, as a, as a mm-hmm. family, to mobilize, to try to get people towards a particular line. Maybe, just maybe, it's, try, it's time to charm again. Who knows? That's me. That's... That's where I'm always at. That's where I'll never stop. Why I get mad at bigger politics in the grander view because more could be done instead of backfighting mm-hmm. uh, politics within, you know, um, 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 lip service, only doing the barest of fucking minimums, not doing your job, not listening to your advice, not all of it. I always stick in a spot, but um, you and I, because because I give you that that vibe too. And, and like our people too, like I feel like mm-hmm. our friend group like is like that too, like as well. We're constantly in that mode, we're constantly in that the yo, the fight never done. The fight never fucking done. Hopefully others will see our way now. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fuck You made your you made your bed lay in it, slap lecker. Yeah, guys. No, yeah, no, we can't end like that, man. Oh, okay. We can't end like that, man. We can't end like that. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Calm down, Marlo. No, no, that would catch me. That would catch me. That would catch me like a motherfucker. Hey, guys, Merry Christmas. Yo, hey, we'll see you me. next year. Unless some other kind of crazy shit just, you know, happens. Some Anything go haywire, we'll be back. Guys, yeah, that's what she said. She meant a thing, and I mean a thing, too. Keep your eye on Venezuela. This is no fucking joke. That's, a, that's oh, yeah. another fucking headache about to happen, y'all. Keep your... Yeah, and to all my Guyanese people, Odessi, what you say? Yo, I hope everything go good. I hope everything go good with the country. I hope everything go good. And cooler heads prevail and not no bullshit happens. And we'll see from there. But yeah, guys, on top of that, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. This and the good. season of doom and gloom continues. No, no, we put ne- yo, we put this one to bed. Next All right. week we'll come back, and I'll have bells in my like in my balls or some shit like that. Every time I walk, I twinkle, and we're gonna be happy and unicorn and rainbows and all that shit. World oh? peace. World peace. Peace. In the Middle East and all over the world, especially in Guyana and Venezuela, and in Holland. Okay. We're supposed to end. Okay, guys. I, yeah, okay. We'll be back sometime, somewhere, someplace. Soon enough. And uh, come back stronger, guys. Later.